Right. New week, new news. Same old me. Welcome back to another new show, and this week we have a fair amount to talk about, or at least a couple of rather big things, which should take up some nice, decent amounts of time. We start today with EA and Bioware in some not particularly pleasant news, in the sense that the Mass Effect series has been effectively put on hold by EA. There are probably several reasons for this, but I suspect the main reason is the sort of disappointing sales of Mass Effect Andromeda, signified probably mostly by the sort of lower digit, lower physical sales rather than the previous game in the series. I, however, do not think that this is particularly a good thing. I appreciate the fact that the Mass Effect series is beloved and. What I would prefer is, rather than the team working on something completely different or another Mass Effect game, I would have them work just to sort of fix out and get all of the bugs that people found and all of the problems that people had with Mass Effect Andromeda fixed. Just do that for six months, then maybe move on to something else. But as it stands, I, I don't know. This, this shouldn't be taken as a sign that EA have done an EA and are going to sort of swallow or get rid of this name and move everything around. No one has been laid off, which is always a good start, and nobody, yeah, no companies have been going anywhere, all that's happened is staff have been moved around. Some of them have been moved on to the new Battlefront 2, start the Star Wars Battlefront 2, the second one. Some staff have been moved on to the new IP that they're developing called Live Service, for now at least, whatever that is and some of them have been moved on to a different area of Bioware to work on other Bioware projects. Projects including the multiplayer for Mass Effect Andromeda, so that's going to be a thing, and I don't care. If, if you're gonna, if you see this news and you think, Mass Effect's dead, oh no, my favourite franchise is gone forever, that's probably not true. I think they're probably just going to let it uh, lie for a few years now, hopefully more than about three or four, however many it was between the last two, and just, you know, let the ill will simmer down a little bit, because that seems to be how the games industry works. In some rather fun news, modders have set out to make Half-Life 2 in VR. This was basically... oh, hello. Oh, oh the sun's ruining my light. Oh no. Can I close my curtains and have it be fine? I hope so. Mostly. I, I can't do anything else. I literally can't improve the light any other way. Fuck. The project was picked up from a an original sort of thing that was developed for a very old VR system that won't run on any sort of modern thing like the Vive or the Oculus. And these modders are planning to release this VR conversion of Half-Life 2 sometime this next month or two. It's going to be released for free and it has also had a big texture upgrade. All the weapons should be fully sort of revamped and usable. And of course the crowbar is there. However, this time if you have a motion control system such as with the Vive, you get to do the crowbar bit yourself. So as fast as you can go do 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 with the crowbar, that's how quickly you can use it and hit things. I quite like that. That's quite a fun thing. From the sensible to the stupid, EA again. Because <laughs> of course it's EA. The new Need for Speed game is now set to have a full single player experience. That is not news. I'm going to stress, this is a gaming news show, that should not be news. I'm doing a Donald Trump. That should not be news. That's not how Donald Trump talks. Fucking hell. They have stressed that due to the sort of negative reception of the previous Need for Speed game, the little reboot they did a couple of years ago that was online only, this game will now have a fully single player campaign and released a statement with a nice little quip at the end. For those of you asking, it will mean you can pause. This is a positive thing. It shows that EA are learning. However, 
it is also stupid. It is not news, and it should never be news, that a game has a thing that should always be there in the first place. Who remembers Deadly Premonition, the weird sort of game released in 2007 by Swery, a man who releases whatever the fuck he wants? Deadly Premonition is now back, but maybe not in the way everybody would like. It is back as a board game. The board game itself has not been developed by Swery himself, but has been developed by some other people who have his blessing to do it. The game will feature characters from the original game, and was funded on Kickstarter in an incredibly short amount of time with a $50,000 goal, and it has already vastly crushed that goal. Those words do not work very well in a sentence together. The game is self-described as a adversarial, an adversarial rather, two to four player card based game where you and four detect and your det and your there. Where you and your detectives have to find out who's innocent and who's guilty. There is a hidden killer amongst you, can you find out who it is? I think that's verbatim, I might have got the end bit slightly wrong. So basically this is a sort of grown-up Cluedo based on deadly premonition. Probably, probably with better gameplay, actually. Cluedo's sort of overrated, I think. It's a bit sort of... It's fine, but, you know, at least it's not as bad as Monopoly, I suppose. So if you liked Deadly Premonition or anything about Deadly Premonition and wanted something from it again, you've not got a second game, but if you like board games, this might just be for you. A teeny tiny bit of news now, and Tokyo 42, a weird sort of cyberpunk isometric shooter which is sort of it's an isometric Grand Theft Auto style thing but it's open world and it's got missions and it looks amazing finally has a release date of May the 31st and normally I wouldn't cover game releases but I've been following this since it was initially announced and my lord does this game look amazing it has possibly one of the finest art styles I've seen in quite a while for a game. And the idea of a sort of Grand Theft Auto isometric thing really appeals to me and I really hope they get this right because everything I've seen from it is slick, stylish and fantastic and I'm really looking forward to its release and I hopefully will have a video on it as soon as I can. On to Valve and not too long ago now, they changed the Steam recommendation system on the store front page. This change was met with rather mixed reception, with some developers accusing Valve of burying smaller titles and others saying that it was just not a very good algorithm and tended to not favour smaller releases. Valve have semi-addressed this issue by basically telling you how a game or why a game was recommended to you. Now when you see a game on your recommended list on the Steam storefront it will give you a reason as to why it was recommended to you. It may be because your friend owns it or has wished for it, it may be because of similar games you've purchased or played recently and it may also be because of high user reviews. So those are the three main criteria for Steam recommending a game to you. And of course this hasn't addressed the issue particularly of the sort of smaller games being buried as such under loads of loads of shit that populates Steam now. But it's a start, I think. I think they're going sort of in the right direction, but they just need to maybe, I don't know, give the good indie games a bit of a better boost up and I'll just curate your store properly, Steam. Please, Val, do it. Just make it better again. And finally, we are into some rather unpleasant news again, this time concerning Square Enix. Square Enix have decided to sell off IO Interactive. That's IO, not IO as in the moon. I think the moon. Probably. The reason, well, the popular reason given for this is the poor sales of the Hitman game that came out last year. I can understand that you'd be sort of pessimistic of all of this based on uh, the sales of that game because it wasn't amazing the way it was sold. I really am not a fan of the model it was done with. That it can work for certain games, like episodic games, it can work for games that, I don't know, I just don't think it should have been done with Hitman, to be honest. 
What this does, however, mean is that all future IO Interactive projects, including Season 2 and 3 of the Hitman game, which were planned to be released at some point this year and next year, have now been scrapped. So for those of you who have the 2016 Hitman and all of the first episode and are hoping to have a bit more of that game, you may well be smacked down out of luck. What the fuck was that phrase? The Hitman series as a whole now lies in limbo because it was basically IO Interactive's only major franchise. They did Kane and Lynch and a couple of other games. Uh, those aren't meant worth mentioning and Kane and Lynch is a pile of shit. I do not think that, they should, that Square Enix should have put IO up for sale. Normally, that's what I'd say. However, Square Enix announced that IO Interactive, that particular division, had made a rather staggering loss of 4,800 odd million yen. I'll put the exact figure on screen, which translates to about three, no, 30 million pounds and 40 million dollars. That is a spectacularly large amount of money to lose, so as much as it sucks that IO Interactive is being put up for sale and the Hitman series is in doubt, when a division of a company makes that level of loss, I really, I can understand why they've done it, as much as, 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 much as it is a massive, massive shame. So there we go, that's the news for this week, I hope you enjoyed it. I might, in the next couple of weeks, try and fiddle around with a different type of setting for the news instead of my office and you might hopefully have better lighting, you never know. If you enjoyed my news content and you would like some more gaming related content, you could watch my series on Fury which is here. You could also watch the video I did this week which was on some weird simulator games which you can watch here and of course you can subscribe here. There. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time for some more news.